Hey friends, my name is Sean. I'm from Yamaha Drums. I'm going to take some time to uh, talk about a brand new drum that we are releasing in our 50th anniversary year, being 2017. The drum set is called Raideen. Raideen is a mythical creature from the uh, Japanese mythology that uh, depicts the god of thunder. And we thought that that was a rather uh, obvious kind of name to use so that you can create your own thunder. With this drum set, you have two different configurations. RD P2F5 is a 22, 10, 12, 16, and snare drum shell pack with the tom mounts. The RDP OF5 is a 20 inch bass drum with a 10, 12, 14 floor tom, and 14 inch snare drum. We're gonna put together the 20 inch version in this experience and uh, let's have some fun. So the first thing we wanna do when we start opening up one of these boxes, take everything out, make sure we've got everything out of the box. And so once you grab your knife, make sure it's not too long so we don't cut into any of the drums in the box. This is like Christmas. Now that we've got everything out, let's put it together. Okay, now as we got the boxes open, we're going to pull everything out and take an inventory of what we've got to work with here. So, I have my snare drum, I've got my two heads, my 14 inch floor tom, got my 10 inch tom tom, my 12 inch tom tom, my floor tom legs, my tom mounts, my hoop protector for the kick pedal, and of course all my tension rods and claws necessary to head the drums up. Also got these nice red wrapped hoops. But the most important thing you'll need is this. This is the drum key. This is gonna help you do all the work that you need to do. So I like to use the box as a platform so I'm not leaning over when you're putting your bass drum together. That's my recommendation. Take a look at this nice bass drum shell. Feel the bearing edges. See the standard Yamaha style mount. When you're putting the heads on, you gotta make sure you put the right ones on the right side. The part of the drum that you hit is called the batter side. That head looks like this. Place gently on the top. It sits nicely on the bearing edge. Then take your hoop, it's your hoop on top. Now, another way to recognize when you're putting the batter head on the right side is you look at the spurs that hold the bass drum in place, it should be towards the front of the resonant side, not the batter side. Check out these nice beaded reinforced claws here. And we're gonna line those up with each of the lug points. Grab our tension rod with metal washer, like all professional drums have. Line it up and with your fingers, just begin to tighten it up until you can't turn it with your fingers anymore. What you want is to not see any more wrinkles in the bass drum head. See how smoothly, nicely just glides right in there? Once we get them all put in, finger tight, then we give them a nice fine tuning with our drum key. This is where I apply the foot protector that goes on the batter side to keep your pedal secure against the bass drum hoop. And stick it on there. Voila. Now we're gonna flip the drum over and do the resonance side. Representing. So here I am just tightening the tension rods just to take the wrinkles out of the resonant head. And the way the bass drum feels and sounds is gonna have a lot to do with the fine tuning that you do at this point. Too tight is not good, but also too loose is not either. All right, I think we're ready to move on to the next step. Let's put the uh, floor tom together. All right, now we're gonna head the floor tom. When it comes out of the box, you'll see the two hoops are on the one end and they're attached by two tension rods. So you'll have to undo those and then take the two hoops separately apart. One for the top, one for the bottom. It doesn't matter which one, they're the same weight, as are the drum heads. Put my drum head on the top, line up the tension rods, metal washers, and just again, put these in until they're finger tight and do the fine tuning right after you're done. Just finger tight, and they can do the fine tuning with the key as soon as you get it feeling good. I'm just give it a good push so it seats properly all around the bearing edge. And we just want to get the wrinkles out. There we 
go. It's starting to sound like a drum. Turn it over, do the resonant side. That means the side that we don't hit. Pop on the head, tension rod, metal washer. Maybe you're saying to yourself right now, maybe I'm gonna see this guy hit these drums. Well, I gotta tell you something, I'm a bad drummer. That doesn't mean I have to have a bad drum kit. Cool. So now we've got the heads on the bass drum and our floor tom, we can get ready to positioning the drum set. So the next process, we've got the bass drum together, we've got the floor tom heads on, is for adjusting how we want our bass drum height to be by using the spurs. The spurs are here on the front of the drum, can be opened out and have a telescopic end, the spike on the end to keep the bass drum from moving on you. Once you find the height that you like, use your fingers to calculate the other side. I'm going to use three fingers for instance, and I'm going to just move to three, and I'm going to tighten it up, and I'm going to do the same on the other side, three fingers, that way I know they're the same height. Make sure they're tight, put it down, and now you're not going anywhere on me. With the floor tom, you want to put the legs in. You see the floor tom brackets? Put each of your legs in position. You will usually change this once you set it up, depending on how you like your height of your floor tom. Some people like them high, some people like them low. You tend to have the angle of your floor tom coming from out of the drum for increased stability. So whether you like it totally flat or angled, the three legs allow you to adjust how you want your floor tom to sit. I'm going to put it down like this. I kind of like that height, but again, it's going to depend on where you like it because it's all about you. So let's also put the tom mounts. These are called CL940LB tom mounts. These are professional level tom mounts. What's interesting about these is this resin ball concept. Yamaha invented this. I mean, you see it on lots of different drum products, but this is a Yamaha invention, 1977, as well as the straight hexagonal mount. Put these into the Rydeen base. Same height's good. And then you'll notice you have two position clamps. You can drop these down, and then once you've put your drums into position, you can lock them. So in case you ever take the drum apart again, you'll know exactly what height you want them to be at. So let's start off by putting my 10 inch tom tom here into position, and then my 12 inch tom tom. Voila, if I want them aimed at me, if I want them flat, if I want them lower, I've got this arrangement here. So I'm pretty much ready to get this kit into position, just need to get some hardware. This is, again, the unique idea is being able to turn the drum upside down while it's still on the mount so that I can check for my tuning, then turn it back upside down. Because the drums were designed for how they sound while they're on the tom mount. A lot of people will hit them and they'll sound great and then put them on a tom mount and the sound will change. And this is kind of normal because of the vibration going through all hardware and through the rest of the drums. And tuning them on the mount is really sort of critical for what people are going to hear, whether you're playing in a studio or whether you're playing live. So the Rydeen snare drum is an eight lug, 14 by five and a half snare with an all metal professional B class series Yamaha throw off with a strap, 20 strand, well built, looks cool, matches the drum set. We can't get this really tuned up further until we put some hardware on it, so maybe that's what we should try to do next. One of the beauties of the Rydeen drum set is all the shells are sold in one box. This allows you to have some degree of control over what kind of hardware you like to have. Included with Rydeen in most parts of the world is the HW680W hardware pack, which we're gonna open up and set up with this kit. So here we've got high carbon, we've got aluminum, also a professional level clutch, chain drive, double bracing. It's a solid hi-hat stand. Next we'll get the kick pedal out. Here we have the fp 7 p 10 a foot pedal. I know pros that prefer this pedal. High carbon, heavy duty spring, control of your footboard angle, wire frame, solid aluminum frame, cross bracing, feels solid. Of course, standard felt beater. Can't wait to kick this drum. Put that where you put the protector. We're starting to get some sound now. Let's look at our snare stand. This snare stand, heavy duty, double braced, non-slip feet. That's a piece of art. And then of course, our cymbal stand. This design here, we call this a hiding boom. 
A hiding boom is a very common thing in the industry, whereas the actual shaft of the boom will go back in it. Yamaha invented this, and now we understand why a lot of other companies do it too. Some other things to understand. You can rip these down, depending on how you want your symbol attenuated or not. See the openness on the top allows me to spin this wing bolt consistently over and over and over again without it flying off, which is great because you don't want to have to go chasing those underneath your drum set. The tilter sleeve actually screws on, so you can actually lift it. You want to get this into position for your ride symbol. And HW680 also includes a second where you can throw your crash. Maybe for fun we'll just leave this one straight. Maybe we should throw some cymbals on this and give it a hit. What do you think? One of the funnest things about drums is there's no real right way or wrong way to set them up. It's really depending on what you like and what makes you feel comfortable because the more comfortable you are, the better you're going to play and that's why we're really happy to provide such easy, flexible, good hardware setup. That being said, there's a really old joke that I like. It's like, how do you know when a drum is in tune? when the drummer stops playing with it. So you can set these up in a number of different ways depending on the head combinations or the heads that you're using uh, stock, but there's a lot of variables that you can get out of the sound. Now using Yamaha hardware and Rydeen packs, you can obviously see we can go from the ridiculous to the sublime. With your creativity and your imagination, of course this could all be the same color. We also have, besides mellow yellow and hot red, fine blue, black glitter, silver glitter, and burgundy glitter. So six finishes to work with. Let your imagination go wild. Have a great time. Thanks for tuning in.